Hello, my name is Mai Nguyen from Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. My paper looks at some findings of neuroscience and explores how these could help us to form hypotheses and indication to apply in cross-country management. This paper is based on my recent book on cross-country management, in which I incorporated what I learned from a master study of neuroscience at King's College London. I'd like to start by referring us to a great division in psychology between the cognitive and the behavioral approach. The cognitive approach focuses on what happens inside our brain, while a strict behavioral approach considers the brain as a black box and focuses on the behavioral output. Many of our management theories have been built upon the behavioral approach. Now that technology is breaching these two, you may want to know in what way our theories could be updated. I will pose three questions as examples. Number one is, Concho is socially learned, which is an absolute behavioral theory. We learn the Concho values by imitating and observing each other, and biology has no role in this process. However, values are not biology free. For example, a version of the gene coding for the dopamine receptor is more abundant in population further away from Africa. This version has been associated with risk taking, and just, it could have been beneficial for our migration. So genes evolved to support useful control values. Even more interesting, the same gene leads to opposite control behaviors. Could so people with a gene from higher socioeconomic status change up voluntarily by moving upwards, while people from the poor background tend to change up involuntarily because they are fired? This insight can be quite significant when we think about the impact of support in international mobility, country adaption, HR policy, training, and hiring. It also makes us think more about the emergence of genetic screening offered to employees, and also the possibility that this may link to eugenics, prejudice, and even nationalism. The second question we can reconsider with insight from brain science is, are our individual values static? A major theory in management says so, that a person's values are formed during childhood and it's very hard to change. I'd like to show you this little timeless video of how neurons grow on a dish. It's called brain plasticity. It means the brain can adjust in structure and function to help us adapt to and to create new habits, values, and culture. So several studies have suggested that thanks to the brain plasticity, our values are not fixed. We can even have a multi control mind and being able to switch among opposing values, for example, between collectivistic and individualistic. This insight means that we have biology as an argument to support HR programs and policies that aim to develop global mindset and cross cultural competence. More importantly, it debunks a trend of neurosexism, which is selective brain studies to show that because women and men have different brains, they are suited for different jobs. Finally, my last question is about the collective values. Are they also static as many management theories claim? Most of us know half set index, which gives each country a score on its values. These scores don't change because country is static, which is why the index has been an indication for international business for a long time. These values shape the behaviors. It's a one-way street. If we know the values of a country, then we can predict the behaviors of people in that country. However, as you will see in this video, repeated behavior can change attitude and potentially a collective culture.
So the good news coming from this is that change does not always have to start with a belief. It can start with a behavior. The body list, the mind will follow. This allows us to be free from the cultural determinism. The idea that a culture is fixed and we are just its products. It also support a much more optimistic attitude to be the change that you want to see in the world. For organization, it means we could rethink the importance of routine, the importance of creating habits in organizational change, and the need to strategically reward and reinforce a target behavior. To conclude, many management theories are based on behavioral approach. So with insight from neuroscience, we should reconsider these theories and practices. For example, are cultural values socially learned and are they also very static? Incorporating insight from neuroscience can help us reevaluate and approach cultural management in a more holistic way. Thank you for listening.